I previously announced that Arkansas was seeking a Medicaid waiver uh, to provide bonus pay for many who provide direct care for COVID-19 patients and for those who are caring for those at risk. Uh, there were a number of different parts of that waiver request, as you recall, including payments to hospitals for uh, revising the way their facilities deliver health care. Uh, but all of those have not uh, been acted upon. Some of them have been delayed. They ask us to break apart what I consider the most essential and urgent part of our waiver request, and that is for those that uh, are uh, giving the bonus payments to our direct care um, uh, workers who are in the long-term care facilities. Uh, and so uh, we want to focus on that. And today I'm pleased to announce that we did receive approval from Medicaid services in Washington to start these direct care payments for long-term care services. This is extraordinarily good news for those that have been on the front line, that have been putting uh, themselves at risk. Uh, that has shown their commitment to health care during this national emergency. Uh, the payments are to be uh, dedicated direct to direct care workers employed or contracted by, and you can see it up here, so this will include registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, certified nurse aides, personal care aides, home health care aides, nursing assistant personnel, direct care workers, uh, under the supervision of home and community-based waivers, intermediate care facilities, direct care staff, assisted living direct care staff members, hospice service direct care workers, and respiratory therapists. Uh, uh, and so in all of those facilities, those type of personnel will receive those bonus payments. And if you could go to the next uh, chart, uh, this reflects the type of payments, the bonus payments we made. The base supplemental payments will be paid per direct care worker, which is $125 a week if you're working part-time, 40 plus hours per week if you work is $250 a week as bonus payments. And then uh, it has different criteria there. And then this the next criteria, which is really a a doubling or an increase of the payments is for those who have test who are working with those who have tested positive for COVID-19 and are receiving treatment. Those are the ones we know are actually there versus just simply dealing with those that are at risk. And that will be for part time, $125 a week, uh, and then it'll be increased to $250 a week if you're working 20 to 39 hours. 40 plus hours is $500 a week. Again, these are bonus payments. Uh, and uh, so it outlines that criteria. This has been approved. And you might say, well, why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because they have voluntarily done this because they're committed to the patient, but it does put them at risk. And it covers those that are directly dealing with COVID-19 patients, but it's also recognizing those that are putting themselves at risk simply with the at-risk categories. And um, I know that that will be well received. We're very excited about having that waiver. And I want to congratulate Secretary Gillespie and uh, Senior Advisor uh, uh, Dennis Smith for working so hard on this. You might ask, well, who is not covered? And uh, one category that's not covered that we've been asked about are the hospital direct care workers and non-direct care workers in hospitals and nursing home settings. And we want to fill that gap, and that is why today I'm directing uh, at the first meeting of our CARES Act Steering Committee, uh, as they meet today, I'm asking them to approve uh, a sum of money that will be utilized to cover uh, these same uh, supplemental payments for our hospital direct care workers and our non-direct care workers in hospital and nursing home settings. Uh, I hope that they will act uh, favorably on that. We should know later today and then we'll be able to process those payments along the same time frame uh, that we've mentioned here. I did not mention uh, the time frame where this will be covered. The direct care workers payments will be effective on April 5, uh, 2020, this year, 
and so it'll go back to April 5, and we'll end on May 31 of this year. But if our number of cases in Arkansas at that time uh, exceed 1,000, then I said May 31, it should be May 30th. Uh, on that date of May 30th, the payments are authorized to continue for an additional 30-day period, but in no event will it last beyond the date of the national public health emergency that we're currently in. Uh, I applaud CMS for acting very quickly, uh, relatively quickly, uh, on this waiver, but it is will be very important for our health care workers. Uh, and I wanted to thank uh, Hospital Association uh, as well as our Health Care Association for working with us as we obtained this waiver and we developed uh, this uh, program. With that, uh, let me ask Secretary Glaspie to come and uh, to uh, comment on this and uh, followed by, well, Secretary Glaspie, then we'll go to the Surgeon General. Thank you, Governor, and thank you again for your leadership on, on all of this. We are extremely excited to uh, have this piece of the uh, request to CMS in the door and be able to get this underway. I know that all of those who are out there and that work in this uh, long-term services and supports, long-term care settings are asking when and how does this get going. So this afternoon we will be releasing information that um, all of the facilities and home health agencies that want to provide these bonus payments to their workers, and we do hope and believe it will be everyone, can then send to us their intention to do so. We will give them the information uh, that they need to provide so that they can start sending that to us and they can go ahead and give us the information for the week that has already passed, the week of April 5th through April 12th. So we can go ahead and get those payments processed and out the door to them. As the governor said, these payments must be passed on to the worker. So while the applicable taxes would be withheld, there is not um, an administrative fee or an overhead fee that is withheld by the provider, these bonus payments go to the worker. And um, we will also be working with each of the providers so they know which category they fit in, whether they, uh, they know themselves, but just to have it official, which ones are um, facilities that will fall under the COVID-19 bo enhanced bonus versus the base bonus. Uh, so for example, the 28 nursing homes that Dr. Smith referenced will all fall in for the enhanced bonus payments. And I guess one final note, these are for both public and private facilities. Um, so I have to mention that because the Human Development Centers and the Arkansas Health Center both fall into this category as well. And then as the governor said, very much looking forward to presenting uh, a proposal to do the same thing on the hospital side this afternoon to the steering committee, and then to address the non-direct care workers that work in patient areas as well, the janitors, the laundry services, those types of individuals who are critical and core to the operations of hospitals and nursing homes, and in fact are doing the Lord's work, coming to work every day in this time period. So uh, we're very excited about it, and thank you again, Governor, for your direction.